हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई से अकेडमी In this lecture, let us understand introduction to analog electronic circuits. Generally, in analog electronics, we'll be using the transistors, or advanced form of transistors, which are MOSFETs. A transistor is used to amplify the weak signals. So, a transistor is used to amplify a weak signal. Generally, a transistor is known as BJT, which means bipolar junction transistor. So a transistor is commonly known as BJT, which is bipolar junction transistor. If we say bipolar, which means both electrons and holes are responsible for current flow in a transistor, that's why it is known as bipolar. There will be two junctions that are formed in a transistor, that's why. the name junction and transistor which means transfer of resistors so this we will understand in the future topics a transistor is a three terminal device and there are two types of transistors first one is npn transistor and the second type is pnp transistor here npn is most commonly used transistors so npn transistor is most commonly used transistor if we consider a structure of a transistor it consists of three regions as i told you it can be npn or pnp with three terminals these terminals are known as emitter base and collector so this is the general structure of npn transistor which consists of n layer then a p layer and a n layer since different types of semiconducting materials are used in between the junctions are formed and there are three terminals which is emitter base and collector here the area of collector is large compared to other two regions and the emitter region is moderate and the base region is small since the collector has to collect the majority charge carriers the collector will be moderately doped and the emitter has to emit the majority charge carrier so that the current can flow that's why the emitter region is heavily doped and the base region will be moderately doped if we consider the area and doping if we consider the collector region the area of collector region is large and it is moderately doped if we say moderately doped which means neither it is highly doped nor it is lightly doped so the doping is medium if we consider emitter region the area of emitter region is medium and it is highly doped and if we consider the base region the area of base region is small and it is lightly doped again let us consider the structure of a bjt there will be two junctions in a transistor which is junction j1 and j2 junction j1 is present between emitter and base that's why it is known as emitter base junction and junction j2 is present between base and collector that's why it is known as collector base junction now we need to perform biasing between junction j1 and j2 so that the bjt is turned on so the bjt will turn on and it will start conducting only when we apply the biasing between the junction j1 and j2 now let us consider different type of biasing between junction j1 and j2 and let us see the operation of the transistor in the first case let us take reverse bias in across both junction j1 and j2 if we say reverse bias which means to this n region we need to connect positive terminal of the external voltage source and for the p region we need to connect the negative terminal of the external voltage source in the same way for this p region we will connect negative terminal 
and for the n region we will connect positive terminal of external voltage source both junction j1 and j2 will be reverse bias and across emitter and base will be having the input voltage and across collector and base will be having output voltage we know during reverse bias condition resistance will be very high across both input as well as output that's why the transistor will be off so when we connect reverse bias condition across both junction j1 and j2 the output voltage will be equal to zero hence transistor will be off such type of region of operation of a transistor is known as cutoff region so transistor will be off that's why the region of operation of a transistor is known as cutoff region now when we connect a reverse bias across junction j1 and forward bias across junction j2 so if we connect a reverse bias across junction j1 and if we connect forward bias across junction j2 so here we will be having a reverse bias and forward bias due to reverse bias condition of junction j1 resistance will be very high that's why we will get less output voltage in this second case input voltage will be greater than output voltage so in the second case input voltage will be greater than output voltage such type of condition is known as attenuation if we say attenuation which means we are having very high input voltage but output voltage is very less let us take the third condition where junction j1 is forward bias and junction j2 is reverse bias if we take junction j1 as forward bias and junction j2 is reverse bias so j1 is forward bias j2 is reverse bias due to this condition resistance across junction j1 will be less and the resistance across junction j2 will be high that's why the input voltage will be less than output voltage or we can say output voltage is greater than input voltage so in the third condition the output voltage will be greater than input voltage this condition is known as active region and here amplification of signal is happening so in the third condition the signal is amplified since we are having more output voltage compared to the input voltage such type of condition is known as the transistor is operating in active region and amplification is happening let us take the next condition where junction j1 is forward bias and junction j2 is also forward bias so junction j1 is forward bias and junction j2 is forward bias so this is the fourth condition where junction j1 is forward bias and junction j2 is also forward bias so due to forward bias condition the resistance across junction j1 will be less and resistance across junction j2 is also less here output voltage will be equal to input voltage for this condition we will get output voltage will be equal to input voltage such type of operating region is known as saturation region so in cutoff region transistor will be off and in saturation region transistor will be on so to turn on and turn off which means the transistor is acting as a switch for that case we can use a simple diode itself so to turn on and turn off we can use a simple diode that's why we will not use these two conditions and attenuation is also not used because the transistor is used to amplify the weak signal that's why we will be using the third condition for biasing the transistor which means the 
जंक्शन जे वन इज फॉरवर्ड बायस एंड जंक्शन जे टू इज रिवर्स बायस सो दैट द ट्रांसिस्टर इज ऑपरेटिंग इन एक्टिव रीजन एंड इट कैन एम्पलीफाई द सिग्नल सो एमिटर बेस जंक्शन विल बी फॉरवर्ड बायस एंड कलेक्टर बेस जंक्शन विल बी रिवर्स बायस सो दैट द ट्रांसिस्टर इज ऑपरेटिंग इन एक्टिव रीजन now let us define biasing biasing is a process where an appropriate voltage is applied to any device to turn on so an appropriate voltage is applied to any device to turn on this process is known as biasing for example you can consider a mobile charger that is used for charging the mobile phone so mobile chargers might be 5 volts and 2 amperes here 5 volts is the biasing voltage and 2 ampere is the biasing current so this is the voltage and current required for a mobile phone to turn on or to charge a mobile phone that's why it is known as biasing voltage and biasing current so if you use this charger for a mobile phone the mobile phone will be charging and if you take less current charger or less voltage charger it will charge the mobile phone in a very slow manner if we consider biasing there are four types first one is base biasing second one is emitter biasing next is voltage divider biasing and the fourth type is feedback biasing so these are the four types of biasing in your syllabus we'll be discussing about voltage divider biasing and feedback biasing if we consider a transistor we know it consists of three regions in this symbolic representation of a transistor this arrow mark represents the direction of current flow so for an npn transistor this direction will be outside the device and for a pnp transistor it will be inside the device so this will identify the emitter region the other region is a collector region and the middle region is base region generally the biasing voltage is known as vcc that will be applied across the collector region through a resistor rc the resistor will also be connected at the collector region and the biasing voltage is connected to the collector region and usually the emitter region is connected to ground if we connect the emitter region to the ground which means this region is acting as common between input as well as output which means collector terminal is used as output terminal and base terminal is used as input terminal and emitter terminal will be common between input and output such type of connection is known as common emitter configuration the voltage between base and emitter is known as vbe and the voltage between collector and emitter is vce generally vbe is common for all the biasing and it will be 0.7 volt the current flowing through the collector region is known as ic the current flowing through base region is known as ib and the current that is flowing through the emitter region is ie usually ie will be equal to ic plus ib since ib is very small here ie will be approximately equal to ic here generally ic will be considered as output current and vce is known as output voltage we'll plot the graph of output voltage versus output current so ic is taken in y axis and vce is taken in x axis so here if we apply kvl for a biasing circuit we'll get vce as vcc 
and IC will be equal to VCC by RC. So in x-axis we need to identify a point which is equal to VCC and in y-axis we need to identify a point which will be equal to VCC divided by RC. If we join these two line, this line is known as DC load line and at the middle of this DC load line if we identify a point which is known as Q point, here Q point will be at the center of the load line which is also known as operating point. At operating point the transistor will operate in active region and it will act as amplifier. So this DC load line will be drawn across two maximum points of VCE and IC. So these two points we can call this as VCE maximum and IC maximum. So we can say the Q point is present at IC maximum by 2 and VCE maximum by 2 which are biasing points. So if we say IC maximum by 2 it is present at IC at Q point and VCE at Q point. So this is the biasing point or operating point of a transistor. This is about the introduction to analog electronic circuits. Hope you have understood the topic. Thank you.